Pay family, welcome to the Living Day by Day show. I'm your host, Minister Lakiba Wallace. Of course, y'all know I have backup all the time in the room, and that is Elder John Garrett, Dr. Renee Sunday, and Pastor Yolanda Snipes. This is the Living Day by Day show, guys. And if you're tuning in for the very first time, this is a show where we bring an avenue of information, an avenue of education, and an avenue of inspiration. So we want you to do what you do best, Facebook somebody, tweet somebody, LinkedIn, do whatever you need to do and let them know that the Living Day by Day show, guys, we are broadcasting live right now on AIB TV. And I'm excited today, guys, to have a well-rounded, phenomenal pastor who has traveled all the way, I call it O-Town, all the way from Orlando, Florida to be on the set of the Living Day by Day show, guys. We're in the A in the hot A, that's Atlanta, Georgia. And he is the author of a book. And I was told before we got on this show to make sure I read this book right. So y'all, hold on one second. Lemons to Lemonade, Overcoming Your Past and Winning in the Now. So I'm excited to present to some and introduce to others, none other than Pastor Christopher L. Walker. Thank you. Did I do that right? You you did it just the way I paid you. Okay, absolutely. A check (laughs) is on the way. Wow. Well, we are just so excited to have you as a guest. And so I want you to talk a little bit. Your, your title is uh, very catchy, Lemons to Lemonade. So let's talk a little bit about what's lemons and, and what's lemonade. What does that mean? Well, lemons represent the sour moments, the bitter moments, the sour seasons that are in your life. Mm-hmm. And, of course, the lemonade represents the after process, mm-hmm. so to speak. So. This book is basically about people who have learned how to squeeze purpose out of a sour season. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Mm. And, you know, I I think all too often sometimes people walk around and they got the lemons, but they don't really know how to make the lemonade. Right. And so um, we're going to just dive deep into this. And so I want you to talk about that process, because a lot of times we can walk around for years, you know, 10 and 15 and 20 years. And we Mm. got these lemons. We don't know we have them. And and God has really given you the tools, you know, to make the lemonade. But we don't really recognize that. You know, I'm going to share something quickly. You know, God always tells me when I get into a situation like you already have what you need Mm -hmm. and so you already have that lemonade but all too often we don't recognize that and so what would you say to those group of people out there who they're riding around with lemons they're in the church house every time the church doors are open so let's talk a little bit about how you go from lemons to lemonade well um, you know I I first have to start with the testimony of where the book came from Mm -hmm. and you know, because you have to understand the process of lemonade. And uh, over 18 years ago, um, I was married at a young age. I was 19. And uh, by the time I was 22, my wife at that time had walked off and left me with a two and three year old. Oh, wow. And so I got off work and she's gone and there's the babies. Um, At this time in my life, I was a worship leader for a church. So I had to go to church and pretend like everything was fine. Right. There was nothing going Mm -hmm. on. I lied for months because people obviously would say, I'm the worship leader, you know, where's your wife? Mm -hmm. And I would say, she's at home or she's sick or something. But uh, I basically went into a a deep depression. Mm -hmm. And in six weeks, I lost everything. Mm -hmm. I lost my job. uh, My car was repossessed. I lost $10,000 in a business deal. And my lights were Mm -hmm. shut off. And this all happened in six weeks. Mm -hmm. Uh, I wanted to end my life. And I ended up on welfare. You know, back then they didn't have the fancy cars they got right now. You had the books. <laughs> hey, you, you, you had the paper money. <laughs> but um, so I'm standing in the welfare line mm-hmm. and I have this this prodigal son moment. I'm like, God, I don't have to, you know, what has happened to me? And I realized that I had allowed someone to steal my identity. Wow. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm in line and I just lost who I was and I wanted to end my life. And I realized I have allowed someone to steal my identity and there are a lot of people out there. There are a lot of people who have walked off from people and they have lost their identity in who that person was. And that's mm-hmm. why they can't bounce back. Right. So, uh, the, you know, the, the whole thing about this book is going through your process. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, lemonade is a great drink. It's very refreshing, mm-hmm. but it has gone through a process in order to become lemonade. Um, mm-hmm. uh, You know, when I was growing up, I don't know if you guys ever bought this, but my mother used to buy lemon drink. And that's the 99 cent gallon, you know, that you buy in the store. Now you're going there. But if you read 
ingredients, <laughs> it says 1% fruit juice. Right. So it has the form of lemonade, but what it's denying is the process. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Wow, I like that. It's denying the process. Yeah. And, of course, the power, too. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the process is, number one, you got to have real lemons. Mm -hmm. So people that are going through sour seeds and ask those questions, why is this happening to me? Why mm -hmm. now? What did I do? You know, we always ask the whys when things are happening because we don't expect them to, to happen. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, but the thing about lemons is that without lemons, you can't have rem real lemonade. So your problem, your temporary mm -hmm. sour season is the main ingredient to your success story. Wow. So without the sour season, you can't have lemonade. Awesome. Awesome. I love that. That is just so amazing because, you know, all too often we don't want to go through the, the process. Right. You know, we have this problem. We don't want to go through the process. But I think people need to really understand that in the process comes the, the palace. Right. you know, um, comes to promise. Mm -hmm. And so we want the end result all the time. We don't really want to go through. Right. But I want to go back a little bit because mm -hmm. the story that you just shared yeah. is not likely of a man. No, and y'all know I got to go there. Not. You know, it's not typical for a woman to be leaving a man. Right. You t and I'm not hating on the men. Y'all don't start throwing <laughs> things because I might start throwing things back in right. the name of who? I know, not Jesus. But at any rate, um, <laughs> All too often, that's the story of a, a, a lady, you know. Well, I tell people I lived the life of a single mother for nine years. Wow. Nine years I had those those boys. and um, Amazing. So I would get flowers and cards and stuff on Mother's Day. Um, and, and not only did I live the life, I, when I say I lived the life, my ex-wife, their mom used to live no more than a, a mile and a half from us. And I would call her to see if she was going to keep them for the weekend. And I can tell you from the time that she left to the time they are grown now, she never kept them. She wow. never, ever wow. kept them. If I called and said, you know, can you keep the kids? Can I bring them over? It was always she had something to do. She had something to do. She never kept them on the weekend. She never bought a birthday gift or a Christmas gift ever in their life. Can you help so, a brother out, please? So you I know? lived mm -hmm. the life of a single mother for eight years. And I think that's why now I have such a passion for single mothers right. and single parents because I understand right. what, they, what they're going through and the things that they've, you know, experienced. That awesome. I've experienced myself. Well, I can, I can really just come up with so many more questions, but I know uh, Dr. Renee or, or Yolanda, Pastor Yolanda has some other uh, remarks as well. Well, I have a question, um, and as you were alluding to, yes, we always go through something and we ask the question why, but try to inform our listeners and our viewers today, where do you get this inner strength? Where do you get that passion or purpose to move forward? Because that's what the problem, right. we get stuck. Yeah, <laughs> a, a lot of people are stuck in their yes. lemon season. And that's why I subtitle it overcoming your past and winning in the now, because some people they say, okay, preacher, I can identify with the limits because I got them, but how do I overcome it? How do I come out of it? Yes. Uh, of course, one of the things is the word. Um, what turned it around for me, I was a uh, member of a mega church. When all, when, you know, when I, I was a member of one church as a worship leader, but then I left that church out of embarrassment because you know, I was just depressed. Mm -hmm. But then eventually I went to another church, and this was a mega church, about 2,000 members. Mm -hmm. And every Sunday, I would open up this church, and nobody knew, including the pastor, that I was leaving that service, encouraging thousands when I needed encouragement myself. Yes. They didn't know yes. that I was going home to a house with no water, no lights, yes. no food. And a lot of times, the pastor would put money in my hand, and that's how I got gas money to get home. You know, the scripture said I was, you know, glad when they said unto me, yes. let us go into the house. Well, yes. I literally loved that scripture because... Every, sun, every Saturday night, I couldn't sleep. You know, no yes. night I couldn't sleep, really, because the rats and mm -hmm. roaches and everything, you yes. know, you couldn't sleep. You had no electricity to know what time it was. So when Sunday morning came, I definitely was glad yes. hmm. to go to the house of the Lord. And so I think people used to always say, well, why do you have so much energy? They didn't know. I just came from an abandoned house with no lights. And so I'm glad to be in air and, you yes. know, all of this. So one day my pastor preached the word. Problem or promise is mm -hmm. all how you look at it. Wow. 
And I decided that day that I was going to look at my situation as a temporary problem with a future promise. I was reminded that the Hebrew boys, when they went in, they came out and they didn't look like what they had been through. So when I was opening up service, I was determined that I was not going to look like what I was going through. That's why nobody knew. Mm. <laughs> wow, that is definitely powerful. And if you're just tuning in, you are listening in the words of Pastor Christopher L. Walker. And we're excited today, guys, to be interviewing him. But we are going to take a commercial break. But we want you to make sure that you come back. Sit tight. We're going to pay some bills because we want you to be able to see this show continuously. So stay tuned, guys. We're going to go into a break, but we'll be coming right back. This is Sean Heineman, the doctor of love. And this is Londina Heineman, the nurse of love. And we discuss real topics in a spiritual and practical way so you can apply it to your everyday life. The Doctor of Love Show, giving marriages and relationships the tools to prosper. Hey guys, welcome back to the Living Day by Day Show. I'm still Minister Lakeith Wallace. <laughs> Y'all know I'm silly. And to my left here is Elder John Garrett. Of course, these nice young ladies to my right is Dr. Renee Sunday and Pastor Yolanda Snipes. Guys, this is the LDBD. This is the Living Day by Day show, guys, right here on AIV TV. We are broadcasting live in Atlanta, Georgia, and we're talking to an amazing pastor, Pastor Christopher L. Walker, who wrote the book. Y'all know I got to read it. Get it right. Lemons to Lemonade, Overcoming Your Past and Winning in the Now. Welcome back. Thank you for having me back. And I know uh, in the first segment we were talking about an array of things, and, and you mentioned about um, in a roundabout way that you were homeless. Mm -hmm. And so would you say that that part of your life was the lemons? Yes, it was. Okay. So talk a little bit how you would encourage somebody who they may not be homeless, but they're in a situation right now where yeah. it's tough for them. It's tight for them. You well, know? Yeah. Well, a lemon could be, uh, as I talk about in the book, a lemon could be anything. It could mm -hmm. be a divorce. Mm -hmm. It could be uh, maybe that person was uh, working on their job and they were just shy of retirement and they were let go, ah, that's laid great. off. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe someone was molested or mm -hmm. raped or, so limits could be whatever that most bitter and sour moment of your life is. Mm -hmm. And you have to learn how to squeeze purpose out of that uh, sour situation. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, you, you have to really just find the word, you know, find something that's gonna change your situation. And usually what changes a person's situation and get them out of that rut and that season is that one, you've got to understand that uh, this is temporary. This is not, it's really not about you. It's about the people that you have been assigned to. Oh, wow. You know, they may not see it right now. Mm -hmm. I didn't see it. You couldn't have told me when I was in that house that I would be a pastor 18 years later in the same city that I was homeless in. Oh, wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. I, 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 you could have told me that. I was just trying to survive at that point. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, understand that whatever you're going through, it's for a purpose and a reason, and you've got to find that purpose in it. Awesome. Well, I really love your book, and I'm going to give the other cast members the opportunity to uh, chime in here. But I love the book because it really speaks to an array of folks. Yes. You know, for me, my lemons were um, breast cancer. Yes. And b being a single parent, yes. you know, experiencing financial depletion when I went through breast right. cancer. But the lemonade that came from that mm -hmm. is absolutely amazing. That's so right. your book really speaks to a lot of people. Yeah. And so um, I want Pastor y Yolanda to jump in here because I have so many questions that I could really ask. Because this is really such an amazing book. And I know you're traveling around the globe yeah. doing uh, a multitude of interviews. Um, so before I start getting some more mm -hmm. questions out of my bosom, I'm going to toss this mic over to <laughs> Pastor Yolanda. <laughs> and I thank you mm -hmm. for sharing your testimony. Yes. And my question is, what advice will you get, would you give that person that's in that prodigal son or that prodigal daughter phase of their life where maybe that father wants to go back home, that mother wants to go back home, but they may feel in their heart, I've done so much damage to them, I'm better away. Right. How do they make those steps or that transition to go back? Well, first of all, they got to find themselves just like the prodigal son did. Amen. 
you know, he got out there and he realized, I don't have to live like this. I don't have to uh, live in this. You know, he had such a he had such a great inheritance, and he came to a conclusion one day. You know what? This is not for me. Amen. You know, this he you know he, he realized he had a prom, a promise mm -hmm. at home, but he was living in a promise a problem. Right. And so once he realized that I can go back to my promise, I don't have to stay in my problem. And that's mm -hmm. what people have to realize. I don't have to stay in this. I've got to find myself and shake off the dust and just keep going. Because, you know, the, 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 there was a man who laid beside the pool for 38 years. Mm -hmm. And it's not that the, his healing wasn't there. It was always there every year he went. Right. And the Bible said he was, you know, waiting for them. All of them were waiting for a move of the spirit. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't the only one that was waiting for something to happen. But the problem is they all went looking for something to happen when what they needed was in what was already in them. Mm. Right. And so Jesus didn't lay hands on him. He just asked him a question. How long have you been in your sour season and mm -hmm. do you want to come out of it? And when he said, yes, I do. He said, well, then get up. Amen. Well. <laughs> and I'm thinking of the prodigal son's father. Yes. And, and we have parents and mm -hmm. we have husbands and wives that are standing there for that person. Mm -hmm. What words of encouragement would you give them? Uh, you know, to, to really keep praying for your, your child, keep praying for your husband, keep praying for your wife. Um, this too shall pass. It's just a season. And that's what it's about. It's just a season. And, uh, you know, when I talk about in the book, you know, you got to have real lemons. And then, of course, the second step is you got to be willing to be cut. Mm -hmm. What they're experiencing right now is the cutting season. Right. That's the season that hurts the most. Mm -hmm. But David said, I was afflicted that I might know your ways. And so for some of us, we didn't come closer to God until we were cut. And so for those parents who are saying, when will my child come off of drugs? When will my husband, you know, come out of the streets? When will my wife get saved? Keep praying for them. Keep believing and keep speaking to them. Keep speaking into their life because some people don't have people. They've heard enough negativity. They right. need somebody to speak life into them. If they're not a man of God, call them one anyway. Amen. Hmm. Awesome. Wow. What is one thing that you can purposely tell everybody that while you're winning in the now, how to still handle when the past try to come back? Well, at, at, uh, in chapter 12, I talk about the presentation. And that is when you've gone through the process and I poured this lemonade into this glass and I put a uh, slice of lemon on the edge of the glass. And that's after you've been through your process. Now God wants to use it, use it to present you to refresh <laughs> other people. But at the edge of that glass was a slice of lemon. And I always wonder, why do people put a slice of lemon at the edge of a glass that already has lemonade in it? Oh, wow. God says that is to remind you of where you came from. Oh. And so you cannot forget, what you, while you're refreshing other people, don't forget that you once had a lemon season yourself. Wow. Don't forget about that EBT card you used to swipe. Yes. So when you, so when you come into your, your lemonade season where you're refreshing other people, you can't forget that you once live that same season. Today, I minister to homeless people. I've kept people from being homeless. I've paid bills. I've ministered to single mothers. I mean, I don't think I would have that heart that I have now because I understand. Right. You know, everything else I can maybe push aside. But when it comes to single mothers and homeless people, uh, that's kind of like, that's like my, 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 my strength, you know, is being pulled. Because I've right. been there. I know what it feels like um, to not have lights and water, not have a, a, a another parent, you know, be involved right. and exactly. nobody not know what you're going through. And you're trying to keep your head above water and you're trying to keep your kids from feeling what you're feeling. Right. You know, so um, just never forget where you are. I mean, today I sit on this set and 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 actually I, I, I was counting the other day how many interviews I had gotten mm -hmm. since the book came out three months ago. Okay. I have 50 radio wow. and television interviews across mm -hmm. the country, Canada and the Bahamas. Wow, that's a real As of right now, I have no that's PR. Real good lemonade, lemonade I have for no, sure. <laughs> I have no PR person. Uh, 
I have, uh, I'm a self-publisher. I just wow. did what God told me to do, That's laid good. the book out, got it, you know, all that. And, and, and I want to encourage even those who are out there writing books. Some, some people were like me. That's, this book sat on my computer for six years because wow. I couldn't afford to, to print it right. because there are so many printing companies that want it for $5,000. Right. But I can tell you today that I laid this book out, did the cover, got my first hundred copies all under $900. Wow. That's great. That's awesome. And so um, I, all I can say is God is doing this. Mm -hmm. I mean, every time I get an interview, I get another interview. Okay. Um, that's just how God is doing it. Just this week alone, I'm doing five TV networks this week. Awesome. And so, wow. yes, indeed. Very awesome. yeah, God is doing awesome. it. But I give him, give him all the glory because people are being refreshed today because I was cut and squeezed before. Wow. wow. You know, I one other question. Yeah. Okay. Wow, absolutely. For every pastor like yourself mm -hmm. that has to deal with a wife walking away, what would you encourage him? Keep going. Don't give up on who you are and your calling and don't lose your identity or your calling in somebody else. Mm -hmm. You know, when my first wife walked up, I wasn't a pastor. I was just a worship leader. Mm -hmm. But you can imagine that's a hard thing to have to do because right. you got to think about it. My job was to come to church and uplift not only the name of the Lord, but, but everybody lift else. up everybody else. Right. So right. while I'm lifting everybody else up, mm -hmm. I also have to deal with not showing what I'm going through mm -hmm. because I'm hurt and depressed. Right. And then I've got to lie because, mm -hmm. you know, the saint, my, my mother going to ask you, baby, where your wife? <laughs> exactly. I ain't seen her in three right. Sundays. Is she now. okay? Is she all right? <laughs> and so you, you got to come up with something. And so I was balancing trying to lie and worship oh, and encourage so people and wow. then encourage myself. Exactly. And that was mm -hmm. a hard juggling. So, I would encourage every pastor or minister or even that pastor who may be in a sour season. Perhaps they have a ministry that hasn't grown. People have walked away. Mm -hmm. Money is not coming in. Your right. church is in foreclosure. Mm -hmm. That's a sour season. Oh, definitely. But you've got to squeeze definitely. purpose out of this wow. and keep going because if God told you to do it, mm -hmm. he's going to provide for it. That's right. No matter who walks away. Exactly. Wow. wow. You know, I just think about Ephesians 3 and 20 where, when it says, now unto him who's able yeah. to do exceedingly abundantly all that we can ever imagine or mm -hmm. think according to, watch this, the mm -hmm. power all right. that work inside of us. And so the lemonade is the power yes. that's inside of us. And so I'm just <laughs> so excited, you know, to be able to have the opportunity to interview you because I'm sure there are um, an array of folks out there who are in their limit season. Yes. And they want to know how to cross over to the lemonade. And so right. we're going to go into another commercial break. But when we come back, we're going to really dive deep into that. I really like the fact that you're transparent because people really need to understand that, mm -hmm. that we sit here on this set today. We looking good. Right. We looking fine. Yeah. I think I'm the only one. Well, she got weave. I got weave. This is not mine, y'all, in case y'all was wondering. <laughs> um, at any rate, um, and so we all, we look nice, but we do have some lemons. And so right. um, I want to talk um, a little bit more about how we get to that lemonade um, process, that phase, because yes. it is there for everybody. Yes. yes. Some of us just don't take the cup and drink it. And so, so we want you guys to make sure that you stay tuned. We're going to go into another commercial break, but we'll be coming right back with the Living Day by Day show. Sit tight. Hi, everybody. This is Dr. Renee Sunday, the co-host of the Living Day by Day TV show. I want to tell you about an upcoming exciting event. It's called the Sunday Grief MD Pet Seminar. It will be held in Atlanta, Georgia on December the 14th, 2013. It's at the GICC, which is the Georgia International Convention Center. The time is 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Come out and learn information about what to do when you're in a grieving process. Is it okay to grieve? Is it okay to have physical, emotional, and spiritual responses? Just what to do next? Should we have a memorial? All these questions will be answered. If you want to have additional information, you can Facebook us, Twitter, and also you can go to our website, which is www.sgmdseminars.org, or you can email us at sgmdseminars at gmail.com. Please join us if you want to be a sponsor, if you want to be a vendor, or if you just want to be our guest. Please join us, and thank you so much for your time. Be blessed. 
Hey guys, welcome back to the set of the Living Day by Day show. I'm your host, Minister Lakiba Wallace, and I'm here with my co-host, so that is Dr. Renee Sunday, Pastor Yolanda Snipes, and Elder John Garrett. And we are chatting it up today, guys, with none other than Pastor Christopher L. Walker. You got to get the L in because there's so many Christopher Walkers. This mm. is Christopher L. L. Yeah. Walker. <laughs> <laughs> and he has wrote an incredible book entitled Lemons to Lemonade, Overcoming Your Past and Winning in the Now. I want you to talk a little bit about some of the scenarios and some of the situations that you um, have very um, crafty wise put in your book here. Well, I always tell people that uh, the reason why I put the stories in there, because there's only one chapter about myself, and I decided to put different variations of stories because, you know, every, everybody can identify with lemons. Mm -hmm. If you look at the Bible, the Bible is full of lemons to lemonade stories, right. people who started one way but because of their faith you know they're they're able to refresh us now when we when we read their stories mm -hmm. uh I, I love music so one mm -hmm. of my favorite artists is uh, dr marvin sapp right and <laughs> when we listen to his songs you know the never would have made it he saw the best in me a lot of these songs they refresh us at a point of hurt or need in our life and they encourage us mm -hmm. But in order for Marvin to encourage us today, mm -hmm. he had to be cut and squeezed. Mm. Wow. That's good. Most of the songs that, right. that are popular, that are bestsellers, that minister to us, he wrote those songs or they were birthed out of a sour season in his life mm -hmm. when he lost his father, his father in the Lord. His wife died of cancer. Mm -hmm. And so those songs were birthed. God knew mm -hmm. that, you know, for Marvin, it was pain. It was, it was hurt. Right. It was that cutting season, that squeezing season. But God knew we needed a song. Mm -hmm. So Marvin had to be squeezed so we can have those songs. Mm -hmm. wow. We're excited. You already have um, Pastor Christopher L. Walker's contact information. You can also hit him up on Facebook as well. He's all over Facebook, all of the social media sites that are out there. Twitter, LinkedIn, I think that's how we connected via LinkedIn. So if you want him to come to your next event or if you want to interview him, make sure you reach out to him. You can always reach out to any one of the co-hosts here on the set or myself as well. You know, I always like to say, get yourself a copy of the Living Day by Day magazine. Isaac Curry is looking amazing on the October edition. I'm not gonna tell y'all who is coming up on January, but it is even, how they say, gooder. <laughs> you know, it, I got ahead to go country. It is going to blow your mind. So make sure you go by www.livingdaybyday.net and get yourself a copy of the Living Day by Day magazine. This show airs every Wednesday, guys, on AIB TV at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So we want you to make sure that your face is somewhere by the TV every Wednesday at 7 a.m. Y'all know we love you right here on the set of the Living Day by Day show and you can't do anything about it. Be blessed. <laughs>